Welcome back to Web Cafe AI. We do daily videos on artificial intelligence for your personal and business life. In today's video, we're going to do quite a special one. We're going to show you how to access API calls with YouTube, but don't worry. We're going to walk you through the entire process. We're going to show you basically how to do stuff that's not natively available in softwares like Zapier or Make and start doing more custom automations for your clients or for your business. This is going to be a really, really cool one. As we know, YouTube is one of the largest networks for media content. So leveraging its API documentation and doing anything we want when it comes to AI and automation is going to be a pretty powerful tool. All right, let's go ahead and jump in here. We are going to be exploring all of YouTube's API documentation. And in today's video, we're going to show you how to take a video that's been uploaded and automatically change the title. Maybe a couple of days later, maybe you want to try and test a different title in the future and see how to perform with YouTube's metrics. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see more content like this, where we do more custom work with API calls and stuff that isn't natively available in Zapier and maybe your automation platform that you use in your backend. For now though, Let's go ahead and do a new trigger here and we're going to go ahead and do YouTube and we're going to learn a bunch of stuff uh, when it comes to API calls, what to understand about them and so on. We're going to a new video and channel. So obviously the first step here is make sure whatever channel you're doing this for, you have access um, to its API, right? So let's go ahead and grab the channel ID. We're going to come to our channel here and go ahead and just copy that little uh, string of characters on the URL from here. We're going to come back over here hit continue and then we'll be able to find uh, new videos found on our channel. So we got one of our shorts videos here. So originally when I was deciding to make this tutorial, I was going to do an action of uploading a new thumbnail because as I was exploring uh, the API documentation to YouTube and Zapier earlier this year, this wasn't an option, but funny enough, it seems like Zapier went ahead and did it for us now. So you can actually update a video thumbnail on YouTube if you wanted to do so. This is helpful in the context of maybe making AI generated videos and you wanna automatically upload a video thumbnail so you don't have to upload it manually. So that's a pretty cool idea. I didn't know this was available um, on YouTube's back end. I think this is a pretty new addition. So once I ran into that, I was like, okay, well, seems like Zapier allows us to natively do that. Let's go ahead and do something else with the API request. So we're gonna go ahead and do API request here. We're gonna hit continue. Continue again, and let's go ahead and jump over to YouTube's documentation. Typically, when dealing with Zapier and API calls, they'll provide a link. If they don't, simply put in the software that you're looking to integrate with and just put in API documentation, and it will take you directly to everything that is relevant for what we care about here. So in today's video, we plan on using this documentation to upload the uh, title of the video, because as you see here with our actions, we aren't able to upload the title of the video. We are only able to upload another video and upload a video thumbnail. So from here, it's gonna jump back over here and we're gonna go ahead and search through the documentation here. But for us, we know that we're looking essentially to upload or update the underlying video. So we're gonna to go to videos here and here's the option for update. You can also use this little filter bar up here. I think a lot of documentation has that. Um, some documentation is cleaner than others uh, for this though. We are here. Okay, so there's gonna be a lot of stuff when it comes to documentation that you need to understand right off the bat. First thing you should understand is typically they'll have the type of HTTP requests right off the bat here. So we come back over here, as we see here, um, we got our URL here. So we're gonna grab the URL, ignore that. Or actually don't ignore it, but know that it's a put. And what I mean by that essentially is if you come over here, it says HTTP method. We have git, patch, delete, post, put, just as a rule of thumb here to git is to receive data, post is to push data, and then put is typically around pushing data or sharing data between two different softwares. From here though, we can go ahead and put puts. We're gonna use a URL that it provides. As you see here, this is the put URL we're gonna be using. It's gonna be able to call upon the underlying video that we wanna update. Obviously, we're gonna have to provide variables so it knows what video we're talking about here. And then let's go ahead and proceed from here. So the next step here is gonna be understanding if there's any type of query string parameters that we need to be uh, known of. And on top of that, what specific action we're trying to do and call upon. So we kind of scroll down here, as you see, there is gonna be this right here. So we wanna do a snippet title. We wanna change the title of the YouTube video. So we're gonna choose the one that says title. Before we do that, we gotta make sure that we are covering all grounds here and what data is being requested. So as you see here, it says, this example updates a specific video, the ID, snippet title and snippet category ID properties are all required. Everything else is optional. So what that means is that anytime we call upon this API, we have to make sure that we include these three variables. As you see here, they even give a code example. 
um, of this being used here. So for example, let's say, well, you know, we're looking at category ID and we have no clue what that even means. Let's go ahead and figure out what that means by simply just clicking on category ID, put in YouTube category ID. And then as you see here, we got a list of category IDs. So if you come back over here um, to see the code example, it says 22 and that would be people in blogs. So for our context, we would be 27 education. So that is going to be our category ID when we push this forward. So now that we know that we understand the variables associated and we understand that essentially we are going for a snippet title. Now we need to proctor the underlying URL we are using in this context. So to do so, what we got to do is, as you see, a required parameter is part and then essentially an additional value to that is going to be one of these. So for us, we're doing a snippet, as you see right here, snippet title. So we're going to go ahead and do part, copy that. I'm going to paste part there. I'm going to come back over here, um, grab snippet, put that in there. And essentially what this is doing is this is putting part and snippet into the URL here, but this is how they want us to structure it for Zapier. So we call upon that specific um, API functions within a, this documentation. So you see there's a bunch of different functions when it comes to snippet. So the one we care about here is going to be title. So now that we have set up exactly what we're targeting here, now we get to our next phase here, which is going to be authentication headers are included automatically. So what that means for us is that we don't have to actually worry about authenticating our ability to even access the specific video we're about to access here due to the fact that we've already connected with Zapier's backend. So there is, there isn't going to be an issue of like, do you even own the rights to have the ability to change the title of that channel in that context? Now, the reason that comes into play and that's why that's even there is because of the fact that sometimes when you do these API requests, maybe the app that's in Zapier doesn't have an API request function, or maybe the app you are integrating is not even you like natively in Zapier. So in that context, you can use a webhook and you would essentially set up your additional request headers here. But for this context, we don't need to. So let's go ahead and jump into the code and change our title. So just right off the bat, so remember the data we're messing with here. This is the shorts video we're messing with here. We got what Twitch is missing. Let's go live and make money with AI. So before we add the code here, let's go ahead and add a chat GPT block here. And we're gonna do a event of conversation. Continue, we choose our account, chat GPT. Continue, I'm gonna say based on this YouTube title, use semicolon parentheses, input our title here. I'm gonna say generate a new one that uses different keywords. So this is just a quick example. Um, so maybe the context is you wanna change the title uh, seven days from now because maybe it's not performing right. Maybe we call upon APIs. If the views are, you know, sub this amount, then we change the title. You know, there's a bunch of complex stuff we can do here, but for now, I think this should be sufficient. So I'm going to go ahead and up the model to GBT4 here and add a memory key, add a memory key. And I am not even going to lie right now <laughs> for a second there, my heart dropped because usually the memory key can be found down here. Um, but they put it back, they put it up UI wise up here. So for a second there, I was like, oh my gosh, Zapier messed up so badly because I thought they removed that variable. Thankfully they didn't. So we're just gonna put YouTube title. Oh, that would have been bad. Okay, um, we're gonna continue here. We're gonna test that action. And if you don't know why I was freaked out that much, memory keys are so fundamental when it comes to automation and AI in general. It, it allows for consistent outputs and scaling. But from here, we got our new title. So I'm gonna go ahead and just format that a little. Actually, one thing I want to do in order to ensure that we have no issues, if we were to do this in reality, so I'm going to add a parameter block here and say max. So in theory, max 100 characters, but I like giving um, a little bit less so that ChatGBT doesn't actually overshoot. So I'm going to do uh, max 90 characters. I'm going to hit continue here. Let's go ahead and test this action. All right, sweet. So we got a new title here, reformatted. Um, let's not add a new action here. Let's go ahead and take this one. Obviously, we're going to go ahead and format out those quotation marks. I'm going to go do text, continue here, do replace. I'm going to do an input, and it's going to be this output here. Go find the quotation marks, continue, replace with empty space, and then we should just get the title text. There you go. We got our title text that we can start using. This is going to be the one that we push forward for the underlying video here. So I could add a filter block here, do some API calls to do the view count. But for now, I just really wanted to show you 
you know how to read documentation when it comes to YouTube and so on. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do it regardless. You know this is gonna incur. So I'm gonna just add a delay block here. No type of um, no type of GPT block or some type of code that essentially says it has to be under this amount of views. I'm gonna do delay four and we'll just say you know seven days. There we go. So in seven days, this YouTube title will update on this underlying video here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the API call here. Let's add the code and send it forward. So if you're not familiar of how to structure the underlying code, use the example code, understand it from the examples. So we go to C code examples. And as you'll notice here, essentially, what is it requesting that's prevalent to what we care about? We understand that it needs the category ID. We understand that it needs the video ID. And we understand that it needs the snippet title as seen with these three main variables here. And as you see here, the code seems to be formatted with brackets here. So, you know, quotation mark, quotation mark, quotation mark, quotation mark. Um, what you'll notice is in within Zapier's backend here, we can actually uh, do our formatting like this, as you see here uh, with foo and bar. It is completely valid within the documentation. So I went ahead and set up the code already. So what we need to do here essentially is we're going to give the video ID so it knows essentially what specific video we are targeting. So I'm going to do uh, ID here, put in the ID here. Then we're calling upon the snippet function. So we do the snippet and then what specifically within snippet are we calling upon is going to be the title. So from here, we're not going to do AI for stream. Let's go ahead and input our uh, formatted out outputs. So we go to X that text formatter here. There we go. And then finally category ID. If you remember, we are education. So I went ahead and put a 27 there and then this should be sufficient enough. We should have enough information here to push this forward. So I'm going to go ahead and hit continue here and test this action. There you go for a successful push. You'll see this. If you scroll down here, there is no errors. And then if we come over to our YouTube, there we go. It went ahead and updated our title as you see above me. Now, in theory, you could also update the description. Just be another API call. Uh, but from here, we have updated our video title to the specific one that we created through our AI automation. Now, one thing I want to point out is that you will run into errors typically when trying to do this kind of stuff because you're learning each API's documentation and really understanding the capabilities of each one. So you run into errors. What you can do is you can scroll down here and when you get an error in an output, it will essentially give one of these codes. And a lot of times with one of these codes, you can kind of troubleshoot a little. So if I got this code, I could essentially be like, okay, the request metadata specifics and invalid scheduled publishing time and so on. So that really helps with the troubleshooting on that end. Also, just looking at their example code is really helpful in the sense of trying to achieve these kind of functions. All right, so I'm gonna make sure to add that zap we just created today in the description down below. Let me know in the comments if you want more complex tutorials like this as you know, unlocking you know, the functions that are not native to Zapier and start doing custom functions like these API calls is gonna really unlock the ability to do a ton of stuff when it comes to AI automation and really make AI integrate with everything possible on any software you use for any context. I mean, that's how powerful this stuff is getting now. It just really comes down to, are you able to do it? That's the question. Um, if you're familiar with a bucket method, you know, writing down a list of manual tasks that's typically associated with something or typically associated with your business, you know, how many of those can be automated, what software is associated and so on. If you feel like you learned something, make sure to like the video. It's completely free and it helps us here at Webcafe AI. If you want to learn more about Zapier and automation and AI, check out the playlist at the end of this video. So we're diving into all 5,000 apps found on Zapier's backend. Make sure to subscribe for daily artificial content. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Webcafe where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.